Today, I wanna show you my washing routine for my 2019 Range Rover Sport. And, um, you know, wrong way or right way, it's my way. What's going on, everybody? Hey, it's Emeka here from the Driven Hard YouTube channel, and this is the 2019 Range Rover Sport, and she is driven hard. So today, I'm gonna show you my washing procedure of how I take care and do my best to keep this thing looking as, as shiny as possible when she's not getting beat up on the trails. And um, so I'm gonna walk you through some of the products I use, and um, yeah, that's really it. And you know, I'm probably just talk about whatever you know, whatever pops up into my head along the way. It's been a little while since I've done this and I'm just trying to figure out when was the last time I actually washed this thing by hand. Um, months, literally months ago. It's July right now and uh, I just had it uh, paint corrected and uh, ceramic coated about, two, about a month and a half ago or so and I haven't washed it since. Um, when I wash it, I've just been going to a freaking touchless wash, spraying it, rinsing it, and spraying it down with their, their soap. Never, well, no, I was using the brush before I got it paint corrected because the paint was already messed up. It's beside the point. But uh, this will be the first actual hand wash. Oh man, oh man. I'm finding like rock chips galore. Alrighty, so we're gonna see what type of damage and whatnot has been, uh, been hiding under the dirt. So let's get into it. So first off, what I'm using, two bucket method. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see these. They're full of water already. But these are the chemical guy buckets. I just love the size of them. And of course, you got the grit guard inside of, I'm gonna use this as my soap bucket and you got the rinse bucket and I'll talk about those two why in a moment. But uh, you got the grit guard and that's what I love about these buckets. Um, mainly, because lots of buckets have the grit guard, mainly, their cyclone system. I've just found this actually keeps the dirt from going back onto your wash mat the best. Then for the wheels, we got my wheel brush. We got for the cleaning the rims. My rims are destroyed though. I don't even know why I bother. And then um, this tough shine brush um, for doing the actual uh, tires. I'll put links in the description for all of these um, products. For the tires afterwards, um, the VRP, vinyl rubber plastic from Chemical Guys, I just, I love how this is not greasy and just leaves the tires with a nice little shine. Um, Brake Buster, since I haven't actually done the tires for so long, this stuff from PNS just works incredibly for just really removing the, the caked on dirt. For soap, Adam's Car Shampoo. Um, honestly, I think I've only used this a couple times, so I'm still getting used to it, but uh, I like it better than what I was using before. And then to finish her off, Bead Maker um, by PNS. I sometimes between washes I'll use this stuff, but uh, this stuff, one, it smells incredible, but two, the shine and the gloss you get from this stuff, absolutely insane. Um, yeah, so this is probably gonna take me three hours. So let's get to it. All right. So I don't really do measurements, but there should be a little less water. Don't need a ton of water because like I said, I'm, there, there are 100% better people to be watching. If you want to learn how to do this, like by a pro, you can watch, you know, Pan or Matt. Um, those guys would probably be cringing if they saw how I do my system, but honestly, I just kind of watch a couple guys and learn and, and do my thing. That's really all we can do. So let's get into things. All right, so wheels first, always wheels first. So I got the air suspension jacked up in its highest setting right now, just to give me a little extra room. Um, I don't have to explain that any further, I hope. But uh, yeah, and oh, where's my where's my pressure washer? Like a proper YouTuber, um, I sold that in Mexico before I came back up, and we honestly we just haven't bothered. I just haven't had time nor bothered to to buy another one. So let me just fix this hose. But a pressure washer would be ideal. Might not even be enough in here. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just using the brake buster and the tires right now, not so much the rims, just because my rims are um, so even when they're clean, they're not going to look as shiny and spectacular as they should be. Um, so it doesn't really matter, but let me, where's my, there's the tough brush. All right. So let's. Man, it's been a long time since I've done this. It's funny when you get your car, your, your first, you, when you first get this, how many times when you first buy your car, do you wash it in a week? I used to wash this like two, three times a week. <laughs> now it's like, oh man. When I do the wheels, I don't worry about the two bucket system. One, cause like I said, my rims are crap. Um, and two, rims take more of a beating than your paint. So I don't worry too, too much about them. I always found starting at the top is best because then everything just kind of sinks down. So, well, I guess one thing I can talk about is I've seen in some of the facer groups I've been in, you know, a lot of people have been asking, should I get a Range Rover? Should I buy a Land Rover? You know, um, it's my first one. I've heard the horror stories. I'm sure you have of them not being reliable and all that. And um, I, you know, there's some dicks in the groups sometimes, smart ass answers. But honestly, as I was telling my brother who just bought a new Ram, I was like, bro, just go into the groups and ask questions. And he was worried about looking like an idiot or a moron, I think, as he put it. I'm like, bro, you're gonna look like that anyways. Oh, um, but I was like, th those groups are so helpful for newbies like myself. Like I'm still pretty new with in terms of the knowledge and everything. I'm just an owner who loves doing his thing and shares it with others. But using those groups is just, it's so key because you get to hear from people's perspective who have actually owned it and whatnot. And you just got to cut through the bullshit of it is a social media platform. It is the internet. So there's just going to be idiots because it's the internet, <laughs> right? Um, but you know, a lot of people ask, "Hey, should we? Should I? Should I get it?" And I always give them the same answer. <laughs> Whoa! Shit. All right, Jesus. All right. Slope driveway. When we build our own house, the driveway is going to be flat. So I always tell them the same thing: is, um, yeah, you can. This has been reliable, I'd say. You know, I, I have no, no quims about it. But if you're concerned about reliability, like what are you really concerned about? Are you concerned about out of pocket expenses? Well, get a, get, get, get a warranty if you are, all right? If you're buying something that's old and it's not gonna be covered by a warranty, well, don't buy a luxury vehicle if you're concerned about out-of-pocket expenses because those are just gonna be higher. Um, it's a luxury vehicle, so out-of-pocket expenses are gonna be higher, any of the luxury brands, right? Um, but I'd say if it's something you've always wanted, go for it. Now, I am very, and some people will disagree, of course, um, do, do not buy their small cars. Um, they make their small cars, the Disco Sport, the Evoque, I think it's just those two. You know, they make those in China, Brazil. Where's the other place? Where's the other place? I don't know, somewhere else where you just don't want stuff made by there unless it's like a freaking orbit hose thing, <laughs> right? The labor's cheap, so you get cheaper quality. Um, you know, these are still made in the UK, as with the Velar, the full size. I believe the full size Discovery still made in the UK. Quality with those is better. Do not buy Land Rover small engines. Don't buy a V6 if you're buying an SUV. Buy something, the, the V8 is probably, this is the last gen for the V8s, I'm, I'm think, or for the five liter V8s. Looks like we're going to BMW for the next gen. We'll see. Um, but at least that engine's also been, like the 4.4 the four, four BMW V8. It's, you know, in the M5, it's in the X5. Like it's, that engine is probably one of the best engines you can get right now. Um, Unlike Lander was last BMW <laughs> partnership. <laughs> um, 
where was I going with that ramble? The, yeah, they're small engines. I just don't think they're any good. I, they'd be more problematic, but uh, that's just my opinion and opinion of a lot of other people, but hey, go with the V8 if you're thinking about uh, one of these. So anyways, one of the issues I always have with when I do these videos is I, I forget certain steps and I literally think I'm done here. Let's just move on to the next one. So once again, sprayed it with the brake buster on just the tire, wheel brush, then did the inside of the rims. Now, normally if I actually really cared, I'd have my brushes and I'd start doing the, yeah, actually let's just do that. Clearly I need a new one, but this is boar's hair. And you just, to do your wheel nuts and the, the smaller exterior places, these work really well. All right, let's move on to the next one. I guess while I'm doing this one, I should plug my merch. Yo, so you can definitely go check out these hats on shopdriven, shopdrivenhard.com. Um, and I'll be honest with you guys, the hats and the sweaters. Um, I'm actually gonna be pulling the shirts from the store right now. Um, I've been using this one company and their quality is just, I've not been happy with it. The, uh, the ink's been fading on it. And I've, I've spoken to them and they're like, oh, we don't know how to make better, better shirts right now. I'm like, oh, you guys. So I'm trying to find a better supplier that's gonna have a higher quality um, printing so it can go through like 30, 40, 50 washes without fading because nothing pisses me off more than that. So um, I'm gonna be pulling those. But yeah, but the hats, absolutely you can pick one up or one of the hoodies. I know it's summertime for most of you. So, um, you might not want to be getting hoodies, but you know, do as you wish. What do you guys think of, uh, you know, the, the new Bronco has come out, all right? The, the actual one, not the sport. <laughs> that brings me to another thing. We'll, we'll stay on traffic, but uh, tell me in the comments, what do you guys think of the new Bronco? Um, I was watching a video this morning of a guy and, uh, you know, just a new owner, just somebody like myself, right? Just got his toy and he's going out having fun with it. Um, you know, he's running into a couple of complications with um, the train management system on it, the different modes and stuff like that. I, I think it might've been a bit more user error than um, then the car, the car faulting, or it could have been a bit of both, it looks like. Um, he did an updated video, and I was just, haven't finished watching that one, but, um, did I already do the big brush? Let's just do it again, for sure. The, um, but it's neat, but man, you can definitely tell it's a Ford product. All the, the bunging and the, I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of, uh, of Ford in general. But, uh. Yeah, but it's definitely gonna take some market share away from Jeep. I would be pissed if I was a Jeep, Jeep executive that's uh, really gonna force them to step up their game with the Wrangler. And even though, you know, they got the 392 coming out and, uh, and everything, but uh, yeah, it's not Jeeps. It's not just the Wrangler in that space anymore. It's kind of, it's always kind of cool. It's like, uh, I was reading an article this morning as well about the, um, is it the, L, the, the full size Range Rover. And when that thing first came out, uh, when, the, when it was first introduced, right? Like this, this model, this generation of it, um, there was no Bentley Bentayga. You know, there was the Porsche Cayenne still, but you know, all these other, you know, the Rolls Royce, whatever the hell it is, um, all of these other super luxury SUVs, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't in the space yet. So um, it'll be really, really cool to see what they've done with the next gen, knowing that they actually have proper competition now. It's not just, oh, I want a big luxury SUV. Um, you know, you kind of go with the Range Rover. Um, there's not, in terms of how it drives and what presence and, and all of that, there's really nothing else. Um, but you know, now there's 
Bentley, Rolls, right? Like there's just those things that cost a quarter of a house pretty much. But uh, yeah, so I don't know, I'm really looking forward to see what they do with the next gen. But I tell you, definitely one thing I'm looking forward to is the next SVR. As long as they don't do something stupid, like put a V6 in it with a big ass electric motor, that would be dumb. I just, you're not gonna get a good sounding V6. I don't care who the manufacturer is. Show me one good sounding V6, right? And the SVR, I think arguably is the best sounding SUV on the market. It's one of the slowest SUVs on the market, but it's the best sounding SUV on the market, 100%. Um, you know, but hopefully they keep a solid V8. Uh, with some sort of an electric powertrain, I don't know. I have big concerns about JLR doing anything electric. I think you should never buy an electric product from JLR. Just until they get their stuff together, which is not gonna happen anytime soon, I would not wanna buy a hybrid system from them. That just makes me cringe, but that's me. But uh, I, that's what I'll replace this with is the next generation's SVR. And I was telling the wife about like, ah, oh, we got some good plans for that. First thing I'll do is get rid of whatever rims it comes on and put 20s on it with some proper off-road tires. I know that's the thing everyone tells me to do. I'm probably just not gonna do it with this. Um, but that's what uh, I'll be doing. Because I don't know, I think there's something special that SVRs out on the trail. Isn't there? Like, isn't there just, you know? But, I don't know, we will see. All right guys, so I had a quick lunch and uh, now we're gonna wash the main part. And I've refilled my soap bucket with some fresh water and soap. Now, the one thing I don't have is, besides the pressure washer, is my foam cannon. I haven't got another one yet. So normally, after a quick rinse, I'd spray it down with the foam cannon just to help lubricate some of the dirt that's not really embedded into the paint or anything like that. But um, I don't have it, so. And another thing, it's like direct sunlight right now. Not the ideal conditions to be washing your car, but. My schedule and today's weather did not work out together. So I just made sure these are gonna be extra, extra sooty. Sooty? Soapy? Sooty? Car washing basics, top, down, front, back, never in swirls. Oh, that's a little warm. Uh, so you drop down the air suspension to its lowest settings. Now the things I wanna be particularly careful about are all the gloss black areas because they're not protected yet. I gotta get, uh, I'm gonna get like a little film to protect them. So, cause those are, that's what scratches the easiest. Get all the cameras, nice and clean. Sensors all working. Shit, it is drying quick here. You know what, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a section by section and rinse it. So, yeah, I gotta rinse that already. That's already, it's already dry. <sighs> So this is gonna be one funky car washing video. Maybe how not to wash your car. <sighs> this is something about it. I just, I absolutely love this. Now, obviously this is the dirtier part. So you just really wanna be careful not to push in any dirt or grime or, or any, anything like that. I'm still using the one side of that cloth haven't wiped it over or flipped it over yet it's good you guys want to say hi to mrs driven hard <laughs> it should be senorita driven hard So 
so they're doing some construction and there is a just down the street here uh, some nasty ass tar i do have some tar remover though so this is definitely not the way you're supposed to use this stuff but i'm just gonna dab it on there a little bit let that just break it down It's too hot and this job is gonna to be too big to deal with removing that piece of tar right now. I really, I, I can't wait till I have a smaller car, honestly. <laughs> this takes so long. Like it's a solid two hour job, sometimes three, if I want to be as detailed as I normally am. Like this is probably about a six at the level. I, I, I used to do this thing. Um, and it would take me yeah, about three hours to do it properly. Another reason I'm not overly concerned about dry water spots or anything is I'm going to go over it with a with the uh, bead maker afterwards so that's going to remove any water spots that I do have so it's all good all good now I'm reusing the brush or the sponge a little bit more here this is bottom part nobody sees really and it's just going to be beat up in terms of paint perfection so, just kind of get that all done in one pass, so to speak. But we still gotta make sure it's clean, because I'll see it. The wipers, you guys don't clean your wipers. That's how you get lots of streak in this stuff. It freaks me out anytime my wiper is working other than 110% clear. Can't stand it, absolutely can't stand it. There's a reason I just buy factory wipers over and over again. And those, those bloody things are about $100 or something like that, or more. They're not cheap, but my God, they are good. My feet are burning here, Jesus. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do here is the mats. You guys wanna see a trick? So on that note, if anybody has a driver's side mat for the L494, the all weather one, I will buy that off of you if you wanna get rid of it. So we got some dried ice cream and some chocolate on these two. If I got ice cream and chocolate on the mats, you can only imagine what the seats are like. There it goes. I'm spent, ah, but this was fun. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I'm gonna grab my bead maker, some microfiber towels. We're gonna start the drying process as well as adding um, a little bit more protection. Really, I'm just doing it to enhance the bead making, to enhance the hydro, hydrophobic properties that the ceramic coating is already doing. Make it even slipperier and shinier. Yeah, we're gonna do that, uh, do the windows, but I'm gonna pull her inside and do her in the garage. So let's do that now. So honestly, guys, I've tried to film this part like three times, but for some reason, the camera keeps crapping out on me. Maybe it's overheating. Um, okay, so we got bead maker here. I'm gonna apply this now. Um, super easy, and remember, this is just for more hydrophobic, hy hy hydro, wow, oh, man, water beading abilities. And because the gloss that this gives it is just sick. So take it, douse it, and then, why is that? and I'm not putting a ton of pressure, just lightly. 
You got you to let this stuff cure for like eight hours. So it's not supposed to get wet or anything. So it really just, so it cures. But um, that won't be a problem because we don't get rain here anymore, apparently. But uh, all right, so I've actually done the entire that side of the video, thought I was, or that side of the car, thought I was filming, which I wasn't. So this door, that panel, and then the front. So let's get that done. And I can't remember if I already said, I'm gonna do the windows tomorrow when I do the in interior, including the windshield with the glass cleaner and the, the uh, waffle pattern, microfiber cloth for windows. So you'll see that in the other video, which will be linked in the description of this video once they're both up. Man, this stuff smells so good. It is way too hot to be doing this. I mean, the paint, it's just, everything's just drying right away. So this stuff does work better when you, when everything's dry, but you can also use it as a drying aid, meaning you can spray it and then dry your car using the product. All right, so the last thing, I'm just gonna throw on the tire shine. My personal preference is one that doesn't make it look super shiny, just makes it look a little better than that. Ta-da! So it'll dry, it'll lose a little bit of that gloss. Then it's gonna look perfect. You know what, if you made it to the end of this video, drop me the emoji in sunglasses in the comments to let me know that you made it all the way to the end because you guys are the diehards and uh, I do this for you. But uh, till next time everyone, let me know what you are driving hard.